Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sitting here on the shores of the Wisconsin River. It's a beautiful day here at the end of April. And uh, I just got back from Lake Murray and I wanted to talk about one of the presentations that was a big player in that tournament that I think a lot of people uh, don't utilize. And I think at the same time, people don't fully understand even how to rig it properly. So I'm going to get into that. Before I do that, I just want to remind all of you to make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. If you subscribe, you will be automatically entered into monthly drawings for our, uh, sponsor prizes. Beef jerky, baits, reels, uh, we give away a little bit of everything every month. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Uh, at the same time, if you're looking for tackle, make sure you click on the link in my uh, description for the realshot.com. It's a tackle shop that has a great selection of baits and you can get 10% uh, off your total order if you use this, the coupon code STEFAN10. Uh, so you can take advantage of that. You can save a little bit of money. It helps me out a little bit at the same time. So if you're looking to buy some tackle and you can't find it in other places, make sure you go there and check it out. I mean, I, like I just went to the website today and they had a whole pile of Berkeley The Deals. And as far as I know, they're sold out everywhere else that you can find. You go to Tackle Warehouse, every color, every size sold out. And you can pretty much get anything you want right now at therealshot.com. So check it out, guys. Okay, so today what I want to talk about is the double fluke rig. Right here. Two baits on one, on one line. It's a uh, phenomenal strategy to catch multiple fish on one cast and at the same time to take advantage of actively feeding fish schooling fish uh you know at lake murray it was a blueback herring bite and and with the blueback herring what you have are are groups of, of bass waiting for a group of blueback herring to swim by and then they just attack them so you'll have five five or six bass that will ambush a group of herring and it's just all out, you know, craziness for like five seconds at a time. So if you can get your baits in there, you have a good shot at hooking up. And if you throw something like this in there, you have a good shot at hooking up with two fish. So it's a really, really good strategy to catch schooling fish. But having said that, it's something I love to throw uh, anywhere that there's smallmouth or spotted bass, you know, with, with those two, uh those two species a lot of times what you have are them in little tiny wolf packs little little wolf packs of two or three fish and if you can get this bait in front of them you can you can double up i mean it's a great great presentation uh, it's really something that you want to use more for open water if you're fishing around uh, any sort of cover or grass a lot of times you'll get these baits to follow follow up you can fish them you can rig them uh, Texas style so you can hook them weedless if you want and that way they'll come through the grass a little bit better But they still seem to hang up a little bit because you don't have the control over where the baits gonna go uh, It just seems like if you're fishing, you know around a, a, a group of grass or you've got to lay down One of these will always go Where it shouldn't you know, it'll end up snagged on something so it is more of an open water presentation Which is one reason it's so good with schooling fish but again, if you're willing to deal with getting some weed or getting hung up once in a while, it's just a great bait for generating bites. So if you want to throw it around laydowns or standing timber, by all means, do it. You will get strikes. You just are going to get hung up every once in a while. So how do you rig it up? So the, the biggest, you know, the bait of choice is going to be your favorite soft jerk bait. These are Berkeley uh, uh, jerk shads. Power bait jerk shads, these are great. The Zoom Fluke is great. Um, Matt Becker won the Lake Murray event throwing a, uh, what was it? I think it was a Guggen bait. Uh, so most, pretty much all major brands have a soft jerk bait. Uh, so it just comes down to which you prefer and what you want to throw. You know, even if you wanted, you could even throw two different brands. You know, I find that I like to keep the same brand on both just because they run the same way and if you have one that tends to glide a lot more or one's a different weight it doesn't seem to run or look as natural but by all means guys if you'd rather throw two different baits 
go for it. You can do it. If you want to throw two different colors, you can do it. You can find out, you know, which color is getting more strikes. Uh, and that way you can narrow it down. And once you find one color is working better than the other, maybe put the same color on both of them at that point. But that's up to you. The key is just to have a soft jerk bait uh, that glides well and looks good in the water. So when this, when this rig originally was formed, what people would do is use a three-way swivel up here to connect the two lines. That works, but I don't recommend it. And the reason I don't recommend it is because if you hook up with two fish, you will break off significant, you know, a, a significant amount of the time you'll break one of them off because the two fish will be pulling in, in two separate directions. And if you have one that's got some pretty good size on it, uh, yeah, you'll break off a lot. So I don't recommend that. So what I recommend doing is getting two small swivels. Like in this case, you can see I've got two small swivels and your, your top line, you're just gonna run it through your line. So it'll slide freely up and down. And at that point, when you do hook up with two fish, that the two fish, if they pull against each other, will just slide apart versus, you know, pulling on that swivel to the point where one of the lines can break. And that's not what you want. So you take, you know, you take your main line before you put your bottom bait on and you go through a swivel. And then at that point, you can tie on your second swivel with your next bait on the bottom. But you, the main thing is you just want that to slide freely up and down the line. As for leader links, guys, this is the next most important thing. You want the top bait to be shorter than the bottom bait. If this top bait is longer or equal, the baits will tangle. If it's shorter, this will very, very rarely tangle. So my standard links are gonna be like 12, roughly 12 inches for the top one, and then about 16 inches to, for the bottom one. So. Usually I'm looking at like 12 to 14 for the top and I'll say 16 to 20 for the bottom. You know, if you go too long, it can become hard to cast and the baits can really get far apart, which isn't a bad thing because a lot of times I think that's one that helps you double up. Uh, but the further they get apart, the more likely they are to tangle and it gets harder to cast. So, you know, the opposite kind of goes the same way. The closer they are to, the less they're gonna separate and therefore I don't think you get the same presentation as you would when they're a little bit further apart. So you don't necessarily want to go with like a, a two inch and four inch leader. I would go with lo something longer than that. So that's why I like to stick with, like I said, 12 to 14 inches and then like 16 to 20 inches for the bottom. But the key is this bait needs to be shorter. So once you've got it in or you've got that tied up, you know, you can go about fishing it. The last thing I'm going to point out with respect to rods, uh, I, it's you know relatively light to throw. These are not weighted. You can weight them if you want. You can put nail weights in them, uh, but there's still enough weight here to throw pretty well with a decent uh, a decent weighted uh, bait casting rod. This is a, a custom MHX blank. This is a, a HMB874, so it's a 734 power. So it's a pretty decent medium heavy, but it's still got a pretty uh, it's not an extremely fast action rod and that allows me to cast the bait decently and I can work it good and at the same time if I hook up with two fish I've got the ability to control the two fish with this rod because it is stout enough. You can throw it uh, with spinning gear you can throw it with you know lighter action rods you just have to be aware that if you do hook up with two fish it becomes harder to land and the likelihood of losing one with lighter action gear becomes more prevalent. But to counter that, I would say don't go too heavy either. You want just a normal medium heavy action rod. A, you know, a 7.3 is a great length. Uh, you don't want to go too heavy because then you're not working it right. And if you go too light, then you have the chance of, of breaking them off. But other than that, you know, a good medium medium speed reel, gear ratio spiel. This is a reel. This is a uh, Abu Garcia Premier. This is just a seven to three speed, I believe, on this one. Uh, just a decent speed. So I'm gonna show you how to work it now. All right, so there's two main ways I like to work this bait. The first is throw it out and just do some simple jerks, just like it's a soft jerk bait. 
And when the bait comes in, you'll see the baits will just spread apart, you know, and they look just fine swimming around like that. And they always, they, for whatever reason, they don't tangle. So that's one way. The next way is just to throw it out. And then I, I, I like to use the reel to impart the action. So I'll reel it fast and stop it. Reel it fast and stop it. Reel it fast and stop it. And when you do that, the baits will follow each other in really good. And then when you stop it, they'll kind of separate and spread. That to me is the is the best procedure. That's the, the best retrieve. That's the one I like the most. I think it's the most natural looking. And it's a really good way to, to trigger fish to bite it. So those are the those are the ways to do it, guys. It's a pretty simple process. Great bait for catching schooling fish. I'd say give it a try. You can throw this all over the country. Catches pretty much every game fish that eats uh, eats bait fish. So give it a try, guys. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.